your opening drew is absolutely brilliant in terms of, I mean, what do you, you don't even need me actually, but, uh, but it's absolutely true what the Democrats are trying to do. And they are perverting this system that is supposed to be nonpartisan, nonpolitical impeachment should not be a political action. This should only happen when there is credible evidence that a president has gone against the interests of the United States of America, treason, bribery, and other high crimes and misdemeanors. Mm. That's the key terminology and other. This isn't just, you know, we think of misdemeanors as, hey, I ran it, you know, I ran a traffic light and I got a ticket. That's not the constitutional context. This is from the old English uh, common law language, meaning offenses against the crown, against the sovereign. This is something that should have an absolutely credible legal basis here, not simply because the Democrats hate President Trump. This is dividing the country. This is ridiculous. I mean, everyone who votes for impeachment, if they do, should themselves be impeached for going against their oath of office to defend and protect the United States Constitution. You know, the point that you just made, that these are high crimes and misdemeanors against the sovereign, and we should just add for the people that the sovereign here is the people, right? The, the, the idea, yes. they had a sovereign who is the king or the queen, but we have a sovereign who's us. And they when, they, when they're when they not a, making an offense against us now, let me ask you something. Last night, we did one of these backstages, and Ben asked me if if they found videotape of Donald Trump, you know, picking a guy up by the front of his shirt and throwing him <laughs> against the wall and saying, listen, Buster, you know, if you don't if you don't go and uh, investigate Joe Biden, I, I mean, and there's nothing even remarkably, it, even uh, vaguely resembling this. But if you don't uh, investigate Joe Biden, I'm withholding military aid. Would that mm -hmm. in your mind be an impeachable offense? Actually, no. I mean, let's not forget that, that President Trump, as the president of the United States can literally threaten to bomb a country, right? Mm. I mean, these are things that threats in and of themselves are not necessarily illegal, right? It depends on whether you can legally carry out that threat. So like, for example, on behalf of a client, I as an attorney could threaten legal action. That doesn't mean that a threat inherently is bad. It simply means is the substance of that threat something that in his capacity as the president of the United States cannot do legally. And so we have kind of this conflict here because the Democrats want to try to paint him as he's only looking for opposition research. And this is against, you know, election and campaign finance laws and all that, you know, this quote unquote thing of value. But let's not forget that even though, yes, he's running for reelection, he is still the sitting president of the United States and has to carry out obligations. And so that would be like saying whenever he uses Air Force One to get around the country, that somehow that's a, that's a thing of value that goes against campaign finance. That's simply not the case here. And so even though, like you said, we have no nothing remotely uh, in terms of any actual evidence, the federal bribery statute, that is one of those terms in the Constitution, talks about bribing a United States federal officer. It doesn't actually go to any sort of communication or um, interrelation on foreign policy or dealing with other countries' heads of state. America has, in our history, threatened action of some sort, threatened to withhold military aid for whatever reason. And that's something that the president of the United States can credibly do. And we have, we have a, a, a treaty with Ukraine that we can investigate corruption, that we can each investigate corruption for the other. So he's actually now looking at this from the Democrat side. Have they has anything happened? I mean, they you know, they use the word impeachment and everybody rushes to their camera and they're having the you know, they're having their one shots out in the White House lawn and everybody's uh, yelling. about. But have they done anything? Has there been a vote? Has, have, have I missed something or is it all show? No, it's completely all show. And that's the question I would really like Nancy Pelosi to answer is when are you going to call a vote? If you actually think that impeachment, if you're not just trying to, you know, straddle the fence here and satisfy the hyper crazy leftists who have been calling for impeachment since, you know, before President Trump was even sworn into office, you know, once he won the election, is she willing to actually call a vote right now? Uh, they haven't even uh, formulated a resolution in the House that would initiate formal inquiry proceedings. All they're doing is saying, hey, let's run these, you know, camera circus kabuki theater hearings like today where Schiff was simply trying to manipulate and spin legal terms into common usage. It was boring. It was ridiculous. It was completely politically partisan. Nothing has actually happened to initiate formal impeachment proceedings. So when are they going to do it? Are they going to do it? Nancy Pelosi has to decide.
That's my last question, and then I'll let you go because I know you got to go to Fox. You know, I mean, I, it's, uh, <laughs> but my, my well, la- you know, there is that, but it's okay. <laughs> I, I mean, the other thing that was said on the backstage last night was Ben was saying he he thinks there's a zero percent chance now that Pelosi can avoid impeachment. I don't agree with that. I I, I think that she is she has pushed the snowball downhill. I, I just want to get your take on it. I know I bring you on for legal questions, but I'm just interested as an observer <laughs> what you think of uh, right. Pelosi's chances of pulling out of this. You know, I think that she put uh, definitely the cart before the horse by her um, her statement that she made her public statement. I think that was, uh, you know, just a couple of days ago. And she before they actually saw the transcript, before she saw the whistleblower complaint saying, yes, there is something somewhere that happened. I mean, b- by her saying that and saying we are moving forward with impeachment, she's kind of painted herself into a corner. I think she can get out of it. I think um, she would be well advised to say, you know what? We were advised wrongly. We kind of, uh, you know, now after looking at this, even though I fully disagree and, you know, she can slam in and paint him unethical and whatever, you know, partisan terms she wants to say. But if she wants to retain any hope of the Democrats not losing a lot of seats in districts that are very important to them in 2020 and impeachment historically has always done that for the impeaching party. America doesn't like this. They don't like this, especially when there is no smoking gun. There is no obvious you know, instance of, of President Trump doing anything wrong, she would be very well advised to come up with some sort of statement, rein it in and say, you know what, we will remain hyper vigilant and we're going to, you know, do our oversight job. But right now is not the time. And we should hope that she has the intestinal fortitude to do that. And I know that that's kind of inherently in conflict with the term Democrat, but we'll see <laughs> what else. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Andrew Clavin Show. If you did, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you stay up to date on all our future content.